one of the men who's been ploughing through that detail, Ian Duncan Smith, former Conservative leader, uh, long standing Leave campaigner. Uh, Mr. Duncan Smith, what do, what do you make of what you've read so far? Well, exactly what you said. It's pretty impenetrable, but there are elements to this. So, on the one side, um, I can understand the government will say quite rightly that they've made progress towards Thursday, that there won't be a kind of standoff and a refusal, but they should get an implementation period which will be over and done with within, within the, well within the two years. So that's on the positive side. However, there is growing disquiet as people read this over a few issues here which are quite important. One is very clearly the Northern Ireland border situation, which still has in the text clear elements that somehow, which the Prime Minister said it can simply not be accepted by a UK Prime Minister, that they would stay within the customs union, or at least... sitting there as a backstop. That is exactly one of the issues. Now, I absolutely trust her on this, but it's clearly in there, which is a, a fudge at best, but really clearly a worry. Second area very much is that the migration policy, which again was very strong, that we wanted to be able to get control over that early on. That has slid away now, it appears. We don't know exactly because I haven't managed to complete that, but it doesn't look like we're going to get what we were asking for at the beginning. And the third area, which I think there is uh, concern about, perhaps most of all, iconically, is fishing, where there does seem to be a real concern about the fact that back in 1970, the fishing industry, the fishermen, etc., were basically dumped in favor of a deal with the European uh, community, as it was then. And people don't want to repeat that now. We want to take back control. And almost iconically, taking back control means control of our fishing waters, and we will license people onto them. Now it appears that, at least through the implementation period, nothing will change. And I think that will be a concern, and government clearly has to deal with that because a lot of MPs here are very uneasy about that right now. Bluntly, has the government rolled over too easily? Well, again, until you've seen exactly where all the backstops are in this document, it's very difficult to say. I mean, I absolutely back and support Theresa May and her desert, determination to get a decent and quick implementation arrangement. But the question really is, if nothing is agreed until everything is agreed, the key question is, what will we agree actually at the end of that implementation period with regards to fishing, with regards to migration, with regards to Northern Ireland borders? This has to be made clear pretty much now. Uh, otherwise, it looks, if you're not careful, like there's a slide towards a very open-ended agreement which leaves all these things lost to us in perpetuity. Yeah, you were mentioning a few moments ago the importance of that line about taking back control as far as the fishing industry is concerned. Another hugely important issue for so many people who voted for Brexit was migration, as you say. We now know that throughout that transition period, so until the end of 2020, effectively, not a lot is going to change. And... I guess that's a hard sell for you on doorsteps and elsewhere when people are saying, I voted for Brexit in 2016, and best part of five years later, things are still the same. Yes, and the key point is that as we've completely detached, we have to get back control of our migration. And I published a paper very recently about how you do that, which would get the numbers down and would get this back into control, whereas high-value people coming in wouldn't be a problem. But the issue here is, during the implementation period, which is just under another two years, we said we were going to get some kind of control over this. And the question to my mind is, which I can't quite get from the text, what does that actually mean? Are we going to be able to control that? Will we be registering people? Will we be able to register with a view that their rights aren't the same after we leave? Or are their rights exactly the same? Can they just come and go as they please? These are big questions which I'm sure the government will want to answer. But I know there's disquiet, and it's not just me, there's disquiet from a lot of people here about this. So they need really to be able to clarify this. What's your reading now on the prospect of a long-term deal? Never mind transition, implementation, the other side of 2020 when we are not just legally out but practically out as well. This is really the number one big question, which is why all of this stuff has been window dressing in a sense, because it all depends on what we get. So the EU has now got to stop messing around and take on the task of settling that deal. What is the relationship between us going to look like? Will we have free trade? Will have taken back control of our borders, our fishing waters, our laws, our money? All of that stuff has to be made very clear for which we will have a deal with them about trade and cooperation going forward. Now that has to be really clear and very quickly because we have to vote on that before we actually leave on the 29th of March 1919, uh, 1919, 2019, I beg your pardon. Uh, but the reality is we have to be clear on that and that has to be voted on. If it's not clear by then, we can't be negotiating all of that during the implementation phase. The Prime Minister herself said, done by the 29th of March 2019. Thank you. Uh, Ian Duncan-Smith there.